BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. That's right. They're licensed, honey. And you can connect in a safe and private online environment. I cannot tell you how convenient this is. As somebody who has used this myself and will continue to do so, I have to let you know you can start communicating in under 48 hours. And it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is a professional counseling center, and it's done securely online. And I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you will get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash workin'. Once again, that's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash W E R K I N. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp dot com slash work in. Well, welcome back, everybody, to Local Queen. My name is Ginger Minge, and whenever I'm at home, I am definitely a local queen. You know, I'm still rolling up to the Hamburger Mary's with my own suitcase, my wig in tow, working for um, $50 and a Coca-Cola. And I am not mad at it, because that is what the foundation of drag truly is. And today I'm here in Seattle. I say today, but girl, I mean, it might be a new day. Somebody call Jennifer Hudson and see if it's a brand new day yet. (laughs) Um, I am here in Seattle. We just had a fabulous sold out show at the Queer Bar. And I'm here with one of Seattle's favorites, Stacey Star Fucker. Yeah. If you're nasty. If you're nasty. If you're nasty. Or you got a hundo. disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) Look at us. We look like a couple of redheaded sluts up here. I like it. Well, I don't know. You look like bougie and fabulous. And I look like Lucy from Charlie Brown going through a midlife crisis. But I'm not mad at it. I'm like uh, Look at in this. the in the trailer park, but the nice end of town. Yeah, yeah, a double wide, uh, triple wide. Are you our double wide diva? Yeah, which okay. is now available for streaming on all of your musical platforms. Okay, Stacey, we're <laughs> gonna jump right into this now. I've gotten to know you pretty well over the last couple of years. We've spent some time doing some shows together. We uh, spent some time at Disneyland, had a great time. We scared the hell out of your friend. What's her name? Elena. Elena, we scared the hell out of her by getting her on that Ferris wheel. She hated it. Well, we didn't know (laughs) that the cars just kind of rolled backwards and made you feel like you were about to fall off. They were swaying. They were swaying and swinging. Uh, Yep. You know, kind of like this brassiere you got on right now. Swaying and swinging. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you want to uh, tell them the tea behind that? My brassiere or Elena? About your brassiere. Oh, um, mm, she's just juicy. She's it's, juicy. She's juicy. And she's not clasped in the We're bag. not. No. Mm-mm. COVID uh, <laughs> gave me a couple juicy pounds, and now I wear a coat. Yeah. So you don't see the back. You're no, welcome. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Anyway, you swang it. Kind of like this bang I got going on right here. It's covering up this eyebrow, which I have um, sweated <laughs> off during the show. So it's strategically placed. See, these are Bangs. little little drag tips Bangs, and tricks. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> when your forehead comes off, you wear a bang piece. Hello. Well, if you sweat too much, you go from a forehead to a five head. Mm-hmm. And then Tyra Banks sues you because you're infringing on her intellectual property. Or so Reba. You- or Reba. Yeah. <gasps> I love her. Our lips are too full for Reba. Oh, but yeah. she is also a country Well, diva. maybe it's her lip line. Yeah. This isn't about Reba, though, girl. No. <laughs> this is about you. I want you to tell our listeners out here just a little bit about yourself. Just, like, the overview. Of you know, Seattle? like No, about you. Oh, myself. About yeah. yourself. Like, whenever you go on into, like, Netflix, and it pulls up that little description box, and you have to click, like, view more info. I want that. I want that blurb. I want your Netflix blurb. Netflix blurb. Netflix is like a horror movie with children's comedy. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I want to scare you and then make you laugh at the same time. Yeah. That that seems about right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and that's just good for any drag. Um, So when did you get your start? Um, I started back six and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. I did a little competition here in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Um, Two years prior... I got my first tattoo, these stars. Well, that's it not was, one. That's your first tattoos. Yeah. It was my, it was at home, a cousin's two partner. Two Yeah. Oh, so those are yeah. homemade? I thought they were well, yeah, prison girl. tats. Well, same thing. 
<laughs> so you got those tattoos. And I everyone regrets their first tattoo. I don't. Oh, Mine's little teeny tiny. It's up here. It's above my dog dress like Stitch. It's my, well, it's there somewhere. It's there. It's comedy and tragedy masks. And I got them when I was 15 years old. Oh, cute. Yeah. I, I, I lied and said my theater instructor was my, um, my mother. We were drunk. I don't know why I was drunk. Well, yeah, I well, do know why I was drunk because there was nothing things. else to do. What else are you going to do? In good old Lake County, Florida. Yeah. So I didn't want to regret these. Yeah. Um, cause everyone does. Uh, well, some people do, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then I was working retail and I was like, well, um, I, the song Stacy's mom has got it going on. I was like, Stacy, that mm. is the name. And then I was telling my coworker, I was like, how do I incorporate my stars and Stacy starship starstruck Stacy starstruck was born, but get this. So weird story. So three months later, um, my, I'm a prom baby. Let's roll it back. I'm a prom baby. Um, my parents split up when I was two and then my mom came out, dyke lesbian. Bless Love her heart. That. She's, she's been married to her wife now for 22 years. I've always like, hoped that my mother would be a late in life lesbian. I think she would just be so much happier. Yeah. She's already got oh, the yeah. haircut. I really just want her to embrace it. Yeah, absolutely. Ugh. So I said, well, mom, I think I'm going to do drag. And she's like, that's weird. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? You're gay. We're like, that's not weird. She was like, well, listen, I never had this conversation. And I think I was like 22 at the time. Mm. I'm 30 now. And um, she's like, well, we never talked about this, but had you been born a biological female, we picked Stacy. Weird. So I was like, okay, well, then it is what it is. Uh, fast forward to literally six months ago, I was talking with my dad. And I was like, so mom said that you wanted a name picked out if I was born a female. And he's like, yeah, I wanted Stacy. Like, you should have been Stacy. And you're like, well, I, I like, am. Well, I am. You got both. See, my father from legend has it, you know. My father um, really, he had had uh, two boys from his first marriage, my two brothers, Richard and JJ. And then my mother had had my sister, Stacy. Oh. Yeah. But she's S-T-A-C-I-E. Oh, I'm with the EY. Yeah, she's yeah. also a bitch. Um, <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I get it, honestly. Uh, yeah. You know, people are like, Ginger's a bitch. Well, you should meet the rest of my family. I am the normal nice one. Anyway, um, <laughs> legend has it that whenever my mother got pregnant, and they tried for a while to get pregnant, um, and then it just, like, once they stopped trying, it just happened. I was, and I was a planned oops baby, if that oh, makes any, yeah. any sense at all. Yeah. And, um, he, my father was just really hoping for a girl. He really wanted a daughter. And then my father and I never got along because he always, like, once I was born, I was always too feminine. And Same. yeah, and he was yeah. like, you know what? I like, just butch it up. Don't talk. I don't want you to embarrass me. Yeah. Southern Baptist. Yeah. Former military, all that stuff. And so I laugh about it now because we've been working on mending our relationship. And I don't know that it'll ever be perfect, but we're, we're friendly now, you know. And I, I finally told him one day, I was like, you, you know, you always wanted a girl and you pretty much got your wish. Like, I blame this on you. Yeah. Because the Lord works in mysterious ways. You got a twofer. Yeah, exactly. A two for one. Can I tell you another weird story? They'll Do probably it. edit this shit out. <laughs> So, um, I'm not condoning psychics or anything. Like, if you believe in them, you believe in them, whatever. You don't believe in them? I do. I'm but obsessed. I'm saying if anybody listening out there doesn't believe in them, that's, that's, that's okay. Yeah. I, like, I'm not yeah, yeah, forcing yeah. that on you. But um, my sister had gone with uh, her best friend, Kendra, years ago over to Casadega, which is a little town in Florida okay. that's like, it's a spiritual psychic town. And if you live there, you, like, you have to be part of the psychics union and all sorts of, like, it's all this, this weird stuff. Um, not weird, but, like, they have their rules and stuff, yeah. you know? It's like a union. <laughs> so um, my sister had gone with Kendra to get her cards read or whatever. Okay. And my, she's just, like, sitting mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. lobby area waiting for everything to be done. And the woman that was doing the reading, her name is Karen, which she's become, like, part of the family now. Um, she's a good Karen, you know? Yeah. And she was sitting in there and she was like, uh, I have nothing to tell you, but I need to talk to your friend. And my sister was like, oh, no, no, no I'm not here for a reading, girl. <laughs> like, I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I don't have yeah. the interest. She's like, no, I need to talk to you. I'm not going to charge you. I just have a message for your mother. And oh. she's like, do you know my mom? She's like, no, I don't know her, but I need to tell her something. And so my sister goes and sits down and she says, I want you to tell your mother that your sister is okay. 
And she said, oh, you're such a fucking quack. I don't have a sister. And she like was laughing about it. And she called my mom when it was over. And my mom just busted out into tears. And apparently between my sister and myself, my mother had gotten pregnant, um, but she had lost the baby and it was supposed to be a girl. And so my mother like got in her car and drove her there and talked to Karen. And Karen Mm -hmm. was like, I want to tell you she's here and she's fine. She said, do you have a son who is different? And she was like, you know, the, you girl, that, we all yeah. know different, different. artistic. Yeah. That's just Southern slang for big old gay, yeah. you know? <laughs> and my mom was like, yes, I do. She said, your son splits genders because whenever a baby is not able to be born, if there's another baby that comes after that, it's kind of the same soul that's split. Oh. And she said, so that's why your son splits genders. <gasps> my mom never said that, you know, I did drag or anything like that's- that. And so, like, I, I don't know. Like, I had a similar experience. You take it with so a grain I of went, salt. I went but... to Portland, and my godmother and her partner, her wife, was getting a reading because they want to do a couple's reading. Uh-huh. And then she stopped. She's like, I need to talk to you. And I was like, uh, what do you want to know? <laughs> she's like, I need you to realize you're too spirited. Yes. You are two different people in one, and I need you to love yourself. And I had never had that conversation with my family about just, mm-hmm. like, not necessarily just like flowing through gender yeah. as who I am. Um, well, no, I had it then. <laughs> well, exactly. And I've always had the thing where, yes, I do believe that some people have psychic abilities, um, yeah. but I have never sought it out. If I've had yeah. several people that have come to me and mm-hmm. said, I need to speak to you. I need to tell you what I need to tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, mm-hmm. I refuse to pay for it. I will tip them yeah. afterwards, but I don't want to pay for that because I feel like, you know, if yeah. you're approaching me and you have to tell me something, prove to me first that you have oh, something yeah. worth saying and you don't just want my $20. <laughs> um, but I've had several people, like there was one who pulled me aside and told me, uh, I see a lot of traveling in your future. I see television. And this, wow. I literally like the next week I got the call to go do season seven of Drag Race. Well, that's exciting. So I, I think that the, like the Sometimes universe gives it's... you signs. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, this is not about any of that. <laughs> We've wasted 11 minutes talking about all of this, but I do think it's very important to talk about like the two spirited thing and, 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 and like the blurred lines of gender. Yeah. Have you always felt, um, like you do blur those lines? Like, I mean, yeah, my dad was like WWE wrestling, NASCAR football. And I was like crafts project runway <laughs> watching all the gay television so i knew something was different but i didn't quite understand Mm -hmm. yeah did you ever spend time like breaking into mama's closet and and putting on the dresses and the heels well actually i have like one fond memory well not i don't know if it's fond but i was very little like three and i remember putting my mom's heels on in a nightgown and my dad's like what are you doing and i was like what and my mom's like okay my dad was like take that off that's like like, exactly my story yeah and, and you can listen to that story set to music with Double Wide Diva by Ginger Minj, now available where fine music is sold, and several Walgreens, I'm sure, at yeah. this point. All right, so six and a half years ago, you decided to try drag for the first time. Try it. You wanted to embrace the tattoos. Well, actually, I moved to Seattle, and I had no friends. I went on a whim. The economy was bad. I was going to school to be an elementary school teacher. And I couldn't get a job. I am learning so much. I, like we are so similar. Do you really? Know I was gonna be. Uh, I was gonna be a school teacher. What grade? I, I wanted to do elementary. I wanted to oh. do drama for elementary. Oh, I love that. I wanted second. This second is, grade. You wanted second grade. I because they like they know the rules. They're excited about mm-hmm. school. They're the ones. After that, they get puberty. And My know. sister <laughs> Stacy is. A, uh, she was a special education fourth grade teacher. Oh, for 25 wow. years in the same school. And then this year she switched to middle school because she moved over to Orlando where we are from Leesburg. And she is, she's finding her way. We'll say it. That. Yeah. Well, we all have to. Middle schoolers you know. are not the nicest people. Uh-uh. Ever. That's why puberty hits. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh. But so it, it like, it, I, I spent a lot of time when she first started as her teacher's assistant. Oh, okay. And then I was teaching children's theater classes outside uh, like in the community theater stuff, like outside of the school system, yeah. because Lake County, they don't have drama programs. So okay. we created our own. And I was like, this is this is my calling. This is what I want to do. Yeah. And then theater kind of took off for me. And then from theater, I got into drag. Were I you a theater that. baby? No. no. I thought the theater kids were weird. 
We, well, we all <laughs> And are. now I'm friends with every single one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, you Literally. basically are a theater well, kid. Here we are. Point. Yeah, I really. So, yeah. um, so I went, I went to school. It wasn't working out. Economy was bad. Moved to Seattle to do hair, had no friends, went to the bar, met some amazing drag queens. Mm -hmm. They became my best friends when I moved here. Um, but then they were like, so um, can you give me some input? Do you like my performance, my hair? And I was like, you know, shelling it out left and right. <laughs> They're like, bitch, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't do drag. <laughs> Isn't that the drag queeniest <laughs> thing to do ever, yeah. though? Where oh, it's like, yeah. can I you ask? Can I get some honest feedback? Bitch, you don't know anything. Yeah. Here's my list. <laughs> <laughs> so then they were like, well, you don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, well, let me prove you wrong. So I entered the competition and that I, I did it literally to prove people wrong. Yeah. To be like, no, I know. It. I mean, the makeup, it wasn't there. Yeah. The costumes were there, though. The like I knew entertainment wise what I was supposed to be doing. Needed to polish a few things. But yeah. it worked. But I also feel like drag is like an ever evolving beast all in in oh, and of itself absolutely. you know because it, it, makeup styles they change the trends are are always coming and going and yeah. i also feel like you know if you feel like you've reached your pinnacle of perfection you have nowhere else to go so you might as well hang up the heels and say quit. farewell yeah. yeah quit yeah you need to always improve do you always. get stage fright Every time. Every time. Literally every time I walk out, I'm like, oh no, I have to pee. Oh God, oh God, I'm going to piss my pants. <laughs> Never happens. No one, your tongue's so tight, it's going to shoot yeah. over your shoulder. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I'm the same way. And my mother was like, I don't understand it because like you've been doing it, you, like before drag, you were doing theater and you've just mm. been in this your whole life. But it's different when you're on stage. You know, I yeah. have severe social anxiety out of drag. Really? Yeah, I, I really do. And I, I get so guessed. nervous whenever I'm at, like getting ready to go on stage and my mom was like well if it's that bad why do you do it i said you know what if i ever stop feeling that that's when i will stop doing drag yeah. because that it like it forces you to fire it, it to be better you know yeah. it forces you to really give it your all so you go in do you win the competition okay so technically yes but technically no so i made it to finals i won that week made uh -huh. it to finals i was supposed to win but I got my first paid gig during Pride and had to leave. Oh. So I was disqualified. Shady. Yeah. Uh, but at least you got but, your paid gig. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I got that. <laughs> so I was like, joke's on you, bitch. <laughs> so you really took to drag like a fish to water. You were like, okay, yeah. I'm good. I've done this. And I'm immediately getting my paid well, gigs. Well, I took a year off after that. A year and a half off. After your first paid gig? Yeah. Why? Because uh, when I first started... I didn't know drag would be so big as it is now. And I wanted mm -hmm. to focus on a career and my career currently is doing hair. And mm -hmm. I was like, when I'm 60, 70, 80 years old, well, hopefully I'm not doing hair at 70, <laughs> 80, but when I'm older, I need something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can be strutting around in heels at 50 years old. Maybe we'll see, but who knows? <laughs> um, I don't know why you kind of looked at me for confirmation. <laughs> I ain't that old. You have some friends. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'll call Mrs. Kasha Davis and ask her. She'll tell me yeah. how it's going. Yeah. Um, so I focused on that and I was like, okay, got this down. Now refocus on drag. Mm -hmm. I think that's smart. I think it's a very smart way to do things. You know, um, when I first started doing drag, I've spoken about this before. It wasn't what it is now. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've been doing it for 16 years, 16 oh, years wow. now. And, you know, when I first started, there weren't YouTube videos. You, uh -uh. We were going into like Walgreens and buying like um, the Max Factor pan sticks and I used dollar store Tony NYX Potter. as like a stick just in my first foundation. Yeah, but they, they didn't even have that. Really? No. Like, I mean, it was like the, the products were very limited. The techniques were just kind of what you picked up from the mm. girls in the dressing room. Yeah. And my drag mother, I know I've told this story before and these people are gonna be like, shut up about this. <laughs> my drag mother, when I first started, she would paint half of my face and she would oh, make me copy smart. it on the other side. And that's she was smart. like, if you look like you have been melted in the microwave, you better pull the bang down lower, but I'm not going to do it for you. Here we go. <laughs> and it, for, it really forced me to like sit there and, and work on it. Yeah. So like, how did you learn your face? Me? Yeah. Um, well, I, I actually would paint and then I would sit backstage and just stare like a creep <laughs> at all the other drag queens. <laughs> and I'm like, how did you do that eye? Where's the cut crease? Mm -hmm. Like I had um, a local queen, Kalina Marcos, paint my face one time 
Um, and then I had one other queen paint my face, but it was all just watching everyone else. Mm -hmm. I just sat there and watched like in awe, like, oh, okay. Like, oh, maybe not the best decision for me, but looks great on you. And yeah. then take little bits and pieces of everyone to create this. Well, and, and that's really kind of what drag is. It is self-expression, but it's all like the little bits and pieces that you pick up mm -hmm. from everybody. You know, I went into season seven with a very narrow view of what drag was because my whole thing was Southern pageants. You know, that oh, that's just kind okay. of, that was what I grew up in. And once I started like traveling the world, mm -hmm. I would realize, oh, I'm, I'm picking up like, oh, you push the edge of the eyelash up. And I picked that up in like, uh, in Manchester, England. Oh, wow. Yeah, there was one girl back there literally with, like, um, a rat tail comb with, the like, the tip of it pulling the eyelash, and she was blow-drying it up like that. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, bitch, just makes your eye look, like, ten I'm times. Like <laughs> yeah, bigger and, and, like, snatched. So I took that from there, and then I went to um, somewhere else, somewhere in Australia, and they were, like, overlining the lip, but then filling it in with gloss so it just looked punked. Oh, and okay. I'm so scared of needles. I don't want to go and get my lips pumped. So I've just been like literally like taking bits, bits and, and pieces. pieces. Yeah. Still to this day, if I see something that I like, I take it. I'm like, let's yeah. try this and see how yeah. it works. Not everything works. No, you try it out. And if it works, great. If it mm -hmm. doesn't, move on. But that's the best part about drag is that it just can be whatever it is. Oh, yeah. You know? It's an amazing art form. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I have said before, and I will say it forever, local girls get kind of a raw deal when it comes to the audiences because the audiences I have learned sometimes they are fans of drag race and not fans of drag. Yeah. And do you feel like, like when you work with somebody who's been on drag race, what kind of atmosphere do you feel like? What kind of pressure do you feel from that audience that isn't necessarily on your side from the moment, you know, you hit the I would stage. say look. So, like, they have this idea of drag race budget. Mm -hmm. And you got a local girl budget. and yeah. But they want you to be, like, blinged out, head to toe, looking like the one who's winning the runway fashion show of blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, like, maybe I'm only paid $50 that night. Yeah. Like from the bar. I mean, I'm making tips. Thank goodness. But absolutely, like, absolutely. But we're working hard. I'm like that. That pressure alone is stressful for so many girls mm -hmm. to be this standard when we don't have a television platform. Yeah, we just have um, social media. If you can even use it, or like if people are using it, mm -hmm. depends on where you are. Well, I, you know, I, I was first on season seven, so there had been six seasons plus an all stars before I was even on the show. And I'm from Orlando, so I was working with, like, Roxy and Detox and Coco mm. and, like, all of these legendary, yeah. iconic Drag Race girls. Yeah. And I was there being the curtain jerker, being the first one out of the shoot, you know? Yeah. The mouth of the South on that yeah. microphone. And I, I would feel it sometimes from the audience. Like, when I first walked out, they weren't as excited and weren't as accepting because they hadn't seen me on television. Yeah. And it was really disheartening at first until I realized, oh, but they don't have any preconceived notions of who I am or what I do. No. So then it was easier to get them on my side, yeah. I felt like. Oh, that's true. That's and true. then, like, once they're on your side, I feel like they are a fan for life. So I will say sometimes when you have certain girls coming in, if you know the girl or you do a little research, you can kind of know their background or mm -hmm. their their fan base and then just Play in a little to that, and then they'll ease up. Yeah. They'll ease up. Yeah. I mean, that's why you did WAP tonight. Yeah, you know, of course. Because you, you know. wanted to just piggyback yeah. off my brand. <laughs> yeah. Warm apple pastry for yeah. those. <laughs> mm, I'm hungry now. <laughs> so you started drag, won the competition, or was supposed to win the competition, supposed but you said, to. I know that struggle. Yeah. And then <laughs> you got your first paid booking, took a year and a half off, and, and then, then just... jumped back in. But at that time, when I jumped back in, it was all free. Yeah. You just volunteer, you show up, you walk around. My first actual, like, bar paid gig, non-pride, they told me I had to show up at the bar for three months straight, at least two times a month, and just say hello so everyone knows who I am. Yeah. So that I had a crowd. Yeah. I mean, I stacked that crowd when I was there, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> I knew what I was supposed to do. But I think that's a really important lesson for everybody to take away from this. If you're just getting into drag, um, it, it, just go and be seen. You have to see, you have yeah. to be seen, you have to support. Even if you can't financially be there to support, just show your face. Yeah. Give some applause, take some pictures, and, and do what you have to do. It goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Just hanging out after a show, saying hello, even now, like six and a half, seven years later, just saying hello to new people coming every single week. They enjoy it. They love it. Yeah. They want to get to know you. It's not like they see you perform and they want to live for you, but they also want to know who you are as a person. Yes. Absolutely. And that's why I will continue to call myself a local queen when I am in Orlando, because, you know, I still, sh I show up for free. I show up for 50 bucks and some, some Coca-Cola and some cheese sticks. <laughs> some mints. Yeah. And, but it's because those people make it so worth it. Yeah. Those are the people that have supported me for the last 16 years. Oh yeah. And I can sit there and be like, oh, hey, Rachel, how's your mom doing? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, Seth, I know Seth is going to listen to this. Hey, Seth, <laughs> I hope your mom's feeling better. Thank her for that candle that she made me. Oh, you know, it, yeah. it's all about that. So I think that even though there is some kind of weird stigma attached to being a local queen, there's also something really just beautiful and pure about it mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily get outside of of that local scene, of your local scene. Oh yeah, I've got to know a lot of the like, my local fan base with doing hair. A lot of them are like, wait, you do hair? So they've, <laughs> they've come to the salon and now I do their hair there. So they get to know me outside of drag mm -hmm. and then I get to know them a little bit better. So I can be like, yeah, I recognize that face. It's harder with masks now, but like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know those eyes. I've seen it. I see that ear, the little one that's a wonky. <laughs> Don't call them out like that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say a name. I didn't say a name. <laughs> but they know who they, they are. Know. Now you do have, you have like a regular job, like an, a normal everyday job that you go to. I do. And drag is your secondary yes. income. Do you think that that's important for you? Like, do you see a time in your life where you'll ever be like, I'm going to put hair on hold and just focus solely on drag? Um, I think if this got larger and I had a larger opportunity, it would take a pause mm. immediately. You, if that bra got larger? Yeah. If this fit a little if bit it fit better. a little better. <laughs> yeah. If the strap actually touched in the back. Yeah. <laughs> what we're saying is this is not an episode of the podcast. This is really just us begging you to donate to this GoFundMe um, for a bra extender. Please. For Stacy, I really need it. <laughs> I got juicy and now I really need it. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have aspirations of, of being on like a drag race or- I would uh, love drag race. I think yeah. drag race is an amazing stepping stone. I don't think it's end all. I think That's like- smart. Um, I won't say it now because I don't want anyone to steal my ideas. But once, I will say once I'm on, you know, um, I feel like I could do bigger, better things, bigger productions. Mm -hmm. I could travel and um, do larger shows or mm -hmm. I could do local things. I could do great things like this. Um, I would love to be able to have that. I would love for you to have that. I think you deserve that. You're definitely one of um, one of the shining stars that I've oh, met thanks. on my journey. I, I love everything that you, you do. You sound very starstruck. <laughs> uh, so who were your influences when you were first starting to figure out who Stacy was? Um, this is a weird question. So like when I first started, the reason why I started drag was because I worked retail, female retail. And I was like, all the girls get to wear so many great clothes and guys get the short end of the stick. Like you yeah. get pants and a t-shirt. whoop de fucking do I mean, <laughs> Oh, you oh, no. can say fuck, fuck, okay. fuck, 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 fuck. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was like, well, how do I get away with this? So I just kept snowballing. Like, oh, I can wear this. I can wear this. So it just was kind of following like fashion trends, seeing celebrities, not one individual celebrity. Like I didn't even know what drag race was until six months after choosing to do drag. Mm -hmm. I saw Portland drag for the first time because I'm from Vancouver, Washington. Okay. But I saw Portland drag and I was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I think I want to do it. I remember going to see drag shows years and before I even started doing drag. There was one that was in like this, 
it's hard to describe because it was the size of a single wide trailer and the interior kind of looked like one with a velvet Elvises on the wall and all that kind of oh. shit. But there was a pool table. It was like just the, the shotgun hallway, you know, there was a pool table and this carpeted area. And there was a little like makeshift bar they had set up over here, like with a, with a card table and stuff. It was tiny in a strip mall in Ocala, Florida. And it was called the connection. And you walk in and the Queens, like the show would start and it would be lit by one of those giant flashlights because they didn't okay. have a spotlight in them. Yeah. You know, those like big camping flashlights and these girls flashlight in a bucket, they would come <laughs> in from the front door and just perform around the pool table while everybody was just kind of backed up against the oh, wall. Wow. And then they'd make their way back out the front door to a shed in the back that they got changed in. And it was like, so it was like guerrilla theater, you know, it was really insane to watch what they went through for, you know, $20 in tips. Yeah. And they probably got $20 to be there and a couple of drink tickets, but they just loved it so much. Have you done a gig similar since you've been on Drag Race? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I, I'm Bianca Del Rio. Uh, she gave me advice from the moment I met her before the cast was even announced. Mm -hmm. And she said, my only advice to you is never say no. That's mad. unless you have That's to. Yeah. And she said, not for you, but for everybody else. She said, you mm -hmm. need to use what you've been given and you need to give back. And that's why we started this podcast, because I wanted to use this platform to kind of, you know, get the voice of, of these other girls out there so other people can fall in love with you the way that we do. Um, so I would like to ask you right now, mm -hmm. who is your favorite drag queen in the entire world? Oh, it's gender win. No, don't say that. <laughs> that's a lie. Drag queen? Uh, I don't have a favorite. Who's your favorite, like, so when local I look girl? Like, oh, local girl? Yeah. The one that turns a party? Who's the one that you saw and you were like, bitch, that could be me one day? Kalina Marcos. Kalina motherfucking Marcos. So I met her, and at the time, when you look back, way back when, we're like, oh, girl. But at the one, at the time, she was like, the one. Uh -huh. And she said to me, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see you do this competition. <laughs> and then she was one of the judges, actually, at the competition. Okay. Yeah. And she was like, I was so stressed, but please don't give this up ever again. Like, yeah. continue doing what you're doing. Yeah. So is she your drag mother? Is that like no. she, you would consider her? No, no, no. Who's no. your drag mother? No one. Me, myself, and I. Yeah, I am. Um, I love drag families, but I don't want to be tied to somebody else's drama and mess. I want to be my own mess. And drama. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to have children? Um, I want to see some people have a drive and um, want to do what I do, and then I will approach. But not at the moment. I wouldn't allow myself to have any drag children until I hit the ten year mark. Because, mm -hmm. you know, now you you do have girls that are going out there like, Mama, I had my first paid booking. Uh -huh. I have been doing drag for four weeks now. Yeah. I've got 17 kids, 22 grandchildren. No. And it, it's just, I didn't want to pass on any of my traits or anything yeah. until they were, you know, tried and true. Yeah. Until I knew kind of who I was and what I had to offer. I also don't think that what my way is perfect. I think no, there's so many different ways. And so like as a drag mom, I'll be your drag sister. I don't want to be your drag mom. I don't want to be old. <laughs> <laughs> but also like we're doing this together. I want to uplift you as much as I hope that you can help uplift me. Mm -hmm. I think that's now, what I have, I, have, I have a smattering of children at this point. And it's all those girls that have like a really strong drive. Because I yeah. tell them, you know, like, like my drag mother with me. She gave me the tools to do it, but she made yeah. me learn it on my own. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's important. If you want to have sustainability in the yeah, business, sure. you've got to learn those things for yourself. Absolutely. What's that old saying? You can you can give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, but you can teach a man to fish and he'll be set for I don't know what the fucking saying is. You can sure. Google it. But, yeah. but it, <laughs> it's that mindset, you know? Yeah. So I want to know from you. Mm -hmm. A little bit more about like what people can expect when they come to see you. Anything, like legit anything. I um, actually had recently, since we've been open since July 1st mm -hmm. or the beginning of July, I had someone who was like, I come every single week. There is not one week where I can turn to my friend left or right and say, 
she's going to do this. I know immediately this is what she does. It's always fun. It's a surprise. There's always, well, majority of the time I reveal. For me, when I perform, it's about escapism. Uh So if we have fun in the moment for three to however many minutes, I did my job. I made you happy. I'm happy. Um, So I'll go out and do things like my One of my favorite performances that I love to do that makes people be like, what? But they live. um, Is Mariah Carey's Fantasy, but I do it as Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, (laughs) subtle. You know, just a little. (laughs) But then I also like to switch things and like do some Miley, do some Gaga. Like I grew up in the deep south of Washington State near Mount (laughs) St. Helens. Um, So I grew up on country. Uh Um, So the good old Shania Twain, the chicks, Dolly, Reba, um, when I pull those out. Ginger Minge, Double White Diva, available now on all yep. streaming platforms. Buy it. Buy it, stream it, like yep. it, share it. Well, yeah. Smash that like button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's always different. And I am I feel like I'm so ADD or ADHD that if I'm bored after two minutes, you might be bored. Yeah. Because I've watched so many drag shows where I'm like, oh, you're so pretty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you discuss amongst yourselves who you think is pretty but boring. We're going to take a brief break to hear a word from our sponsor, and we'll be back with Stacy's Starstruck. So I feel like we've become pretty good friends right now, and I have a question for all of you listening. Is there something that's preventing you from achieving your goals? What interferes with your happiness? I want you to find out because all you have to do is just a click away. You just got to go to betterhelp.com slash work. And that's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash W-E-R-K-I-N. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. That's right. They're licensed, honey. And you can connect in a safe and private online environment. I cannot tell you how convenient this is. As somebody who has used this myself and will continue to do so, I have to let you know you can start communicating in under 48 hours. And it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is a professional counseling center, and it's done securely online. All you have to do is send a message to your counselor anytime you're feeling bad, sad, happy, whatever you feel, and you want to talk about it, just send them a message, and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone phone sessions. That way, you know, you don't have to take time out of your day. It's already there. You don't have to sit in those uncomfortable waiting rooms. Ugh, who wants to do that? It, this service is available for everybody worldwide, so don't worry about where you are thinking you might not be able to get it. We have got you covered, and we cover everything. Well, I say we. <laughs> they cover everything, so don't limit yourself to the counselors located near you. Our licensed professionals are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBTQIA plus matters, grief, self esteem, everything. You get the picture. What I need you to do, though, is reach out now and make sure you talk to somebody to get yourself feeling better. And I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you will get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash workin. Once again, that's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash W-E-R-K-I-N. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash workin. Oh, my goodness. I Oh, I shouldn't come back in like I'm scratching my ear right here. <laughs> Girl, it's just, the glue is starting to flake up. <clears throat> anyway, welcome back to Local Queen. I am Ginger Minge, and I'm here with my very special guest today, Stacey Starstruck hey. from Seattle, Washington. Seattle? Like the apples. Washington apples. Oh. You know that that is like... um. A, uh, oh, I can't talk. What am I thinking of? I don't know. Apples? No, Washington. There's no R in Washington. 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 Well, in the South, we say it like warder. Oh. I'm going to wash the clothes, wash the Accent, dishes. Accent, sorry. Accent. Brain fart, brain fart, brain fart. <laughs> um, a lot of older people say rassle, uh, washer machine. Washington, yeah. like my grandpa said that all the time. I my was like, aunt Joanne, <laughs> my aunt Joanne, when I was growing up, she couldn't say Publix, which is you know if you if you're from 
Florida or anywhere around there, you know Publix is like the best grocery store ever. I know you're probably all sounding off in the comments right now. No, it's this one. It's that. No, Publix is the best. <laughs> Particularly when it comes to pub subs, which are their sandwiches, oh. like sub sandwiches. Yeah. So anyway, she couldn't say Publix and she couldn't say sandwich. So she always said, I'm going out of Publix for sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my sister who was like, can I have a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> How many siblings do you have? Uh, well, I have two half and two step. Okay. Yeah. Well, two so, halves make a whole. Yeah. We all have the same dad. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the two half are from my mom's wife's children. Well, it's mom's wife. Your mom's wife. Yeah. Their her, children. Her child. Yeah, 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 yeah. Children. Children. But you're all kind of raised together. No. No? No. Oh. Actually, uh, so I grew up, so my parents split when I was four and then, or five, and then I ended up moving in with my dad. Um, I didn't know I had a sister until I was 14 and she's five years younger than I am. Oh. And she came to live with us due to, um, I don't want to air dirty laundry, but her like life family um there were some not great things happening yeah so my dad took her in um and i was like oh i had like single child syndrome and then she showed up and i was like what are you doing when do you leave <laughs> i was the youngest of four. Oh, and imagine. we all lived together at different like various points throughout my childhood mm -hmm. i got beat up so much really and I, yes <laughs> mostly by my sister you should have got her back well, I look prettier than she does now, so I feel like that's... You got her back. That's you got enough. her back. That's, that's all the revenge yeah. I need. My brother is nine years younger, so there's like a huge, 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 huge gap. He, anything I said, he said yes, it was great. My step-siblings, I didn't know them till I was 18. Wow. Yeah, I, so when my parents split, uh, my mom has a quite interesting... Um, past she got involved with not great things mm -hmm. um, then she met her partner sobered up um, and so then there was some separation and then once I was 18 I reconnected and then found out I had step siblings well there you go Yeah. so when did you come out to your family uh, well, they knew. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like they always know. Oh, they should, yeah. They always know. I was taking pictures like this. <laughs> at, like, seven. <laughs> my stepmom looks at my mom and was like, you didn't know? My mom was in denial. The Even at 18, my stepmom was like, he asked for yarn and a crochet hook. He wanted art supplies. He's about Project Runway. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, you know, you never know. It's just like my mother always said, he's artistic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She's like, no, 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 no. He's just, he's living. He'll find a girlfriend. <laughs> I am the girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I, let's see. 19 or 20 I officially like came out I came mm -hmm. out to my godmother first um and she said okay great love you changes nothing um my grandpa which I was the scaredest to tell him because he's basically in my opinion he was like a ideal father figure I could tell him Mine anything too. um it was yeah it was great I was like papa I have something to tell you he's like Okay, we're out by the wood shack where we cut wood. Yeah. Um, and I was like, well, I have a boyfriend. And he was <laughs> like, okay. And I, I was like, uh, okay. He was like, well, what do you have to tell me? Uh, I was like, uh, that's it. And he was like, well, are you happy? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, then who cares? That's great. So I love great. that. Uh, and, you know, I was very nervous to come out to my grandparents as well, but they were the ones that were basically the same way they were like well what took you so long it's fine yeah like like yeah. what's the news because this yeah. isn't news to us oh yeah and they were th to them they were like well what does this change mm. what's the difference you're the same person you still care we care about you who cares i was a little more nervous coming out as a drag queen to my mm. family than i was to come out as you know yeah at the time a gay man you know, at this point in life, like, I, I just identify as non-binary because some yeah. days I think I'm the only woman and some days <laughs> I am a bush You're feeling bear. the hair, you're like, yeah. Oh. So, but it was more difficult for me to be like, um, 
on top of that, I also wear high heels and dresses and oh. wigs and stuff. And again, they were like, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Oh, like, yeah. just don't My wear mine. My papa used to joke. He's like, you want to dress for Christmas? Before I even came out doing drag. <laughs> I was like, no, papa, I don't want it. Well, what Turns was, it, out, what was it like for you to come out as a drag queen? Um, it, it was okay. I mean, I didn't have any bad things. My... I will say that my grandparents were interested, but not. They would be like, oh, so what are you doing? How is it? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm working at the bar. I'm making money and like saying hello. Okay, nice. When we move on, we move on. We don't need <laughs> yeah. to talk anymore about it. Um, my mom wants to be front row. Every time she's in town, she tips 20s. She's like, I'm paying your rent. <laughs> <laughs> she was all about it. My godmother, same thing. Um, my cousins, great. I mean, anyone else? I don't care about their opinion. All of, I noticed that all of the women in my family loved it. They were like, oh, "That's great, fantastic! Can't wait to see the show." All of the men thought I was, and not that there's anything wrong with this. They thought I was a stripper. Oh, and I was like, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, if I had yeah. the body. I would love to be a stripper. A clown stripper? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a clown stripper. But it just wasn't, it was so far removed from what I actually did in my act that it was almost insulting that they didn't take the time to really yeah. find out, like, who I was as a performer. Do they ever come to your shows in the beginning? No, uh, all the women did. Oh, gosh. Oh, my, yeah. my my mama, my Aunt Glenda Faye, my cousins, all of them, they would all pile in the car and come over that. and watch it. They, they love it. We're, but the men are still like, oh, what are you doing? Do you have all those crinkled ones from your uh, G-string? I was like, G-string? I'm like, yeah, there you go. I actually, my godmother's son, he graduated high school uh, like uh, during COVID. And I gave him like $100 in ones that I had made. And I was uh, like, here you go, stripper money. <laughs> he just laughs. He's like, ah, okay. <laughs> Nervous, but excited. $100, yeah. Exactly. You take yeah. it where you can get it. Absolutely. Especially after a pandemic. Yeah. yeah. What was the pandemic like for you as a as a local girl? Uh stress. Just stress, 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 stress. Um, I picked up sewing, so I can mm. sew now. Um, pretty decently. Nice. I, I may not sell it yet, but <laughs> for myself it's good. Um Animal Crossing. Um yeah, that was, you know, I just I was more about like escapism. I didn't work. I tried online. I wasn't making the money. Um, and not that it's necessarily about the money, but drag is expensive. It is very expensive. And if you're only getting tips like 5 to $20 a show, I can't. It's not sustainable. It's not. It really isn't. No. Especially and, after you spent two days of like filming, editing, yeah. sending it in, yes. trying to do the most. And you're like, oh, here's $20, which I'm very appreciative of. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not paying. No, it doesn't pay for itself. Yeah. At that point. And it's not even about the profit. It's about like making the ends meet. Yeah. And it, sometimes it just doesn't yeah. do that. Like I just like everybody else, I, I stopped doing drag. I did nothing but digital stuff through the mm -hmm. pandemic and it wasn't the same um, income coming in, but the bills were still the same. Oh yeah. And every stopping. show that I did with my, my best friend Gidget, you know, we were trying to piece together things at no cost because yeah. we weren't making enough money. Like you said, we weren't making mm -hmm. enough to put back into doing another show. Mm -hmm. So we, we had to get very creative. You have to, but I did like it because I felt like it pushed me back into like when it first started doing drag, you had to be very creative. Very and be creative. like, okay, well I'm not on stage. Well, what's the angle? What's the, and not just like, the angle of the camera, but like, what story am I telling? Uh -huh. What's the vibe? How can I edit this? Like, you bust out an old box of of shit, and you yeah. just go, literally. Oh, yeah. here's a here's a feather duster. I'm gonna turn it into a reindeer, and we're gonna do a <laughs> yeah. Christmas show. You're running around town outside, like, stay away from me, but trying to film something <laughs> yeah, looking exactly. crazy. <laughs> so I did feel like if there was a silver lining to that cloud at all, it would be that it really did kind of force at least me and and Gidget to really kind of go back to our roots of of like being real crafty yeah i also learned tech i te uh, 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 can't do it but i got a, um, a new computer did the little iMovie thing figured it out uh -huh. it worked out um and now now if i need to do it i have it 
I'm I get so it. Proud of you. Well, thank you. Nana's still learning over here. I just <laughs> I broke my phone. I had to get a new one for my birthday. It's not even like the newest iPhone, but it it's the size of an iPad. I mean, it's too big for my meaty little paw, yeah. and I can't work anything on it. I mean. Eh. Uh, it's not recognizing my face. It's like, take your lashes off, Mary. <laughs> uh, did you background. did you have an iPhone before that? I did. Oh, I during COVID, I was able to switch to get an iPhone for the first time. I had Android beforehand. I was like, what? There's a flashlight? What? An emoji that talks? It's everything. Ev- I love I it. Couldn't- and it connects to this computer right here, which connects to this microphone, which connects to the knee bone. I like it. it they're it's- all connected. <laughs> We have a studio audience back here today. <laughs> I learned something literally last week for the first time on an iPhone. If you hold the space bar down, it'll move the line, like where you're typing. It'll move it anywhere you want within your what? conversation. Yeah. I didn't know this. After like a year and a half later. I'm going to Google this shit. Yeah. Good luck. Look, I'm so surprised. I lost my eyebrow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Now, I do know we have to wrap up. This is going uh, yeah. a little bit longer, but the conversation has been so good. So, first of all, thank you for coming on thank this. Thank you. Um, I want to ask you a couple quick things. Yes. What was your favorite performance you've ever given in drag? Oh. I, I, no. None? You don't like them, any of them? They all suck. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't, ha- they're always exciting every single time. There's not one that I can be like, oh, I liked that one. Or that like one time I was here, the one time I like every single time, just because I see everyone smiles. Mm-hmm. So it's always exciting every time. Well, so that's Sorry to ruin that bring question. me to my next question, which is actually the better question. What is your least favorite performance ever? I've done a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I love the audience and I love the space, but it was like five people um, in the middle of nowhere or also in the middle of like, they don't know what drag is. Yeah. Uh, um, I could hear my lips move. I could hear the click clack on my heels. I could hear the unzip of the jacket. <laughs> it was a struggle, but we did it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the, I think those are the ones that uh, really make you appreciate the other oh. time was a whole lot more. Yeah. I'm like, thank goodness for loud music. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have two more questions. Yes. Two more. One, what is your definition of local queen? Local queen? Like in Seattle? Just in general. Like if oh. when you hear local queen, what do you think? The one. The one. Because the, like everyone starts as a local queen. We all, mm-hmm. I mean, we all have. Um, you can be a bedroom queen you could be an art queen you could be a a gag queen a stunt queen a pageant queen like you're the one no matter what area you're in you're the one Mm -hmm. and my final question for you is what advice would you give to any local girl out there or somebody who is looking to become a local girl quit just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, keep trying. Keep pushing yourself. Um, if you feel stagnant, look at other girls in other cities. Don't look at like larger names. Look at local girls and mm-hmm. see like how, what are they doing that I want to do better? How do I better myself? And you'll get better. Guaranteed. Yeah. Practice, 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 practice. Absolutely. Even if you like your, you test out an eye for the night and you're like, oh, dang, this is ugly. Go out. Try it. See yeah. what people say. And believe it or not, the things that you think are ugly, everyone thinks is beautiful. I agree with that completely. I I have learned that. Because yeah. I'm like, oh, I look a mess. And they're like, you've never looked better. I'm like, okay. I know. <laughs> Every time I take like five minutes to paint, my husband goes, you've never looked more gorgeous in your life. I'm like, you can see my mustache. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm really into bearded drag right now. You look great. Mm. <laughs> um, but no, I, I agree with you. Like, don't don't look at the girls that you see on TV or in movies no. and all that kind of stuff as kind of where you want to go and who you want to be. Like, I remember I always, I didn't want to be RuPaul. I didn't want to be um, the Roxy Andrews or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be Carmela Marcella Garcia who was known as the mouth of the South and she won like every national pageant ever. And I I am slowly morphing into her as I (laughs) I see our photos side by side sometimes, but she was 
so funny and so beloved. And she had a career way before Drag Race even existed and up until the day she died. Like, mm-hmm. just just so wonderful and I so long. That. Like, 40 years. That's crazy. Of just being a superstar. That's wild. And she created it herself. Do you think you'll do this 40 years later? Well, I've only got like three years left oh, until yeah. my 40th. TikTok, TikTok. No. <laughs> I only have three years left on TikTok. <laughs> Speaking of TikTok, make sure you go and follow me on all social media. You can find all of that information at gingermingeonline.com. That's gingermingeonline.com, not gingerminge.com because that's porn. It is oh. also me. But you yeah. don't want to subscribe to that. And where can our listeners follow you? Instagram. I'm Stacy. That's with an E Y. Stacy. Period. Starstruck. Um, Facebook. Stacy. Starstruck. Um, Miss M S underscore Starstruck on Twitter. I'm not very good at Twitter. See, that's what I'm, I'm trying. Real good at. I'm trying. I love it because all you have to do is be an asshole on Twitter. You're right. well. Or there's show, a lot of show assholes your asshole on Twitter. On Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, every time I'm like scrolling, I'm like, oh, that's someone here. That's their alt, 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 alt. <laughs> time to close, time to close. <laughs> well, Stacy Starstruck, you are a local queen. And I mean that in the best sense of the phrase, because I think that they that local queens are the foundation that this is all built on. And you are Thank a you. hometown shero. <laughs> Make sure you check out Stacy on social media and anytime you are in Seattle. Until next time, this is Ginger Minj signing off. I love you so much and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.